So, you know, guys, the biggest issue with all of this is there's like a ton of scams. Um, this is not, um, at least in my opinion, if you ask me, because I don't know if you can tell, but I'm using a browser that has extension plugins, but it's not Chrome. It's called Brave. So, what Brave is, is, first of all, it's tokenized. It's built on Chromium. It is, uh, somebody took Chrome, took all the nasties out of it, um, and gave it something called a basic attention token. Now, you know, you can dig around in here, but basically the cool capabilities of this thing is that it is blockchain friendly. Um, you can use crypto wallets with it, and what a wallet is, is it's actually not a wallet, it's just a key, and it can plug into, it, well, depending on the keys that you have, your keys plug into, okay, so let's put it this way, um, say you want to put something, so the way that the current internet system works, if you don't know how it is, um, how it currently works, then you're honestly should not be trying to learn about cryptocurrencies or Bitcoin or anything. You need to go and learn the seven layers of the OSI model um, because that's the internet. It's networking, Network Plus, CompTIA, CompTIA A Plus certifications. Um, it's kind of that, some of the IT realm. So a server has a bunch of hard drives in it and it's serve it's called a server because it's serving up files now the way that the internet works is you you're on your computer digital signal hits your modem where it's modulized and then set out analog onto telephone lines um, one pair wire now that's DSL most people have better than that but that goes out to a central office, which is where the operator used to sit and move plugs and switching around. Just think of like a train track. Um, that was a long. That was a while ago too. Now it's all automated, and so your router sends out a request for www. I'm looking for someplace. Com. Well. The first place that it goes to is something called a DNS server. It stands for Domain Name Server. And what that means is that place exists somewhere, but it doesn't know the text or words or English language or whatever language, but it does, it's organized based off numbers, lots of them, um, kind of like the Dewey Decimal System, um, like index cards that used to be used to catalog libraries. Similar system there. But instead we use words, and so it has to go to a place where it has to figure out what that means. So it's a database with a whole bunch of websites cataloged and then pointing to the IP address where to send it. So it sends it out until it can find that server can be directed a route of a pathway bouncing off switches to get to that IP address. And it goes out um, based on a specific protocol and its route to get there can change, or if it's disconnected, the route across the switches of like the telephone system can be like, it'll adjust or detect if um, other things like listening in. Um, so that's how the current internet system works. And those come from a file server. This was my whole main point. It sees you want something, it has, the, it takes it, makes a copy, sends it to you. It sees your wife wants something, takes it, makes a copy, sends it to you. So it's literally just sending out copies. So in today's modern era of thinking, there's no scarcity in digital things because we're like, well, you just, it's a copy, send it to you, copy, send it to you. Um, this is inverse. Okay. So web 3.0 is, there's a blockchain. You want to put something on it. You have to pay a certain amount of fee, gas fee, token fee to get it minted like think of it like kind of like stamped pressed into the blockchain to get it there 
so that people can access it, look at it. Maybe it's a piece of art. Um, but people can go and they can see it. Now, they can't take it. They can't duplicate it. They can't do any of that because you minted it. You, you put it there, so you're the only one with those keys. Um, so it's a little bit backwards. Now, every 10 minutes, it kind of beats, you could call it, when all this electricity and um, circuit boards hash. They're hashing literally to a rhythm. They're encrypting encrypting so it's not like just a steady firewalls that are stayed on and like steady encryption and people have time to find ways around it and find back doors or send in malware or key loggers that log your keystrokes or whatever screen recorders but because it's not like that it's not constantly up and just static this thing is literally beating blocks and so if you can't beat if you can't crack it within that 10 minutes block block so it is the most cybersecure network that mankind has ever produced. Now, in my opinion, it's almost like a like a live, you know, like the Avatar planet thing. Or Skynet. You can call it whatever you want, but it is a more fair and honest method because everybody can look at the rules and everybody nobody can break them. Doesn't matter how much money's in your wallet or how much your wallet controls. Nobody is able to make agreement among the mining um, mempool and t t to affect it. And the first person with the solution, that solution populates to other nodes around it and it spreads across the planet in about 10 minutes. Um, I think there's something like 10,000 people. Um, some, you know, some people host the whole chain and then there's the people who are hashing it with the ASIC miners. Anyways, so I've just been in this for a minute, and there's lots of scams going out. Um, you really need to consult somebody if you don't want to take the time. I've been in this. I'm interested in this. This is technology. There's two industries that are growing or have grown for the last 10 to 20 years. It's technology and finance, and I'm interested in both, and this is literally both of them. So, you know... Good Lord, I, I just, I feel because I see all these scams on YouTube, on my YouTube channel, offering, you know, send me 5,000 ETH and I'll send you 10. It's like the oldest thing in the book. Don't fall for those things. And don't fall for keeping it on Coinbase or keeping it on Kraken or keeping it on anywhere because you don't trust yourself with your private keys. Because if it's... If it's not yours, it's not yours. And it's up for legal debate whose it is. Um, you know, there was a thing with the Robinhood traders. Just got scammed. Like, literally, within this week. Um, they got their accounts emptied. It's no different than having a Robinhood account, an investment. Like, you agree to these things. They're an entity, a corporation that can live eternally, like literally, um, for them file bankruptcy, it doesn't even affect the person who owns it, it doesn't even affect that person's credit if they have a company that goes bankrupt, like you structure it as an LLC, um, so just don't be ignorant, and this is too bad that I feel like Robinhood's a scam, it's, it's, it's a nice handheld gambling casino, and it's like wrapped in like this nice gooey millennial candy that um, people are used to and comfortable with. And then, you know, they get their accounts liquidated and uh, there's not even a phone number to call, no office to go into, an email that says we're on it, we'll get to back to you. Oh, by the way, it was your passwords were compromised outside of our servers and systems, so it's your fault. Like. You know, it's it's too bad if you're looking to invest and you go down the wrong avenues. It's even worse if you don't see the business curve and kind of where things are going. All right, guys. I hope that helps. October 16th, 2020. And I'm out. And I'm fucking out.